progress is the egg channel. Oof, that sounds fun. Hey. Oh, I get a level. Look at my epic pimp hat, dwarf. So we got more skills. Let's go uh, pick up some more mechanics. And so you can you can save these points on a level up. So I can save these three points and wait for mechanics and increase that even more. Something is happening. Great. Oh, we got the level two skills. Hmm. I'm gonna save my points uh, for the mechanics. Two spells. Amplified Trust. Bounds up psychic energy harmlessly of the target and on the closest nearby enemy, causing pierce damage and violently pushing them backwards. Mental Binding. Overwhelms the target's mental ability to communicate with its, its own body, paralyzing it and causing its soul to emit shockwave that can leave nearby enemies stuck. Mind Blades. Corpse targets essence, generating slashing blades of force that attack them before leaping to up to five additional targets. Ooh. Hey, Bobstain. <laughs> nice net. Phantom Foes. Invents the minds of targets in the area effect, causing them to believe they are surrounded by Phantom Foes, leaving them flanked for the duration. Yeah, the mind plates sound, uh, sound really nice. Psycho Vampiric Shield. The Cypher uses target strength to, of mind against it, stealing portion of its resolve in order to better deflect incoming attacks. Recall Ag Agony. Causes Arc to relieve a psychic trauma of an injury moments after receiving it, experiencing the damage all over again. 30% of all damage reapplied over. Whoa! That's quite nice as well. Uh, let's get the mind plates. At least. I like the mental binding as well. Paralyzing the target and uh, getting the other people stuck. Amplified trust. What's the range on the mind plates? 10 plus 10. Nice. Phantom foes. Uh. Other than mind plants, you think uh, mental binding or uh, recall agony? No. Something else then? No. Uh, I'm gonna go with the recall agony. I, I like the idea of this. No new talents. Sadness. Yeah, probably Andromian. Your skin don't look undead. Character or me? A <laughs> Jedi. Weapon focus ruffian. You have a defender, knockdown, and weapons. Let's see. What is your class? Can you actually see that class somewhere? Character. Fighter. Meadow Folk. Wood Elf Wizard. The Wood Farmer. Nice. Well, the character. <laughs> I, I am pretty pale in real life, too. Medium Shield and Saber. Let's see if I have any, any nice junk for you. Yes. Onwards we go on a happy journey. Let's go check the blacksmith. 
We need to go kill something soon. My killing sense is itching. We don't steal anything in here. Come on, come on, guard, apprentice. <laughs> you, you, you can pick the poison. Something, something nice. Let's talk to this smithy there. Tuatano. This ammo man is of an impressive build, towering about the countertop. His uh, skin is dusk blue of uh, deeper oceans, and his thick arms boast a corded muscle. Small air uh, frame, once again, square jaw uh, face coated in smear suit and arcing black tattoos. I like. What is this one? Fresh. Caffeineless herbal drink. Cocoa bean and peppermint leaves. Cocoa shells. Ah, that's fine. Yes, yes, there is he got. I'm gonna check it soon. Eder has ruffian weapons focus, so keep uh, the saber and give him a pistol if you get one. I have a pistol. He offers you a broad smile as you approach. Welcome. You are the first new face I've seen in quite some time. What can I do for you? Farewell. Is this your shop? That it is. Been uh, here nearly uh, on 20 years now. Seen all manner of things over the years. Good luck and bad. Totano glances at uh, the guard standing watch along the wall. But the black hammer uh, smithery remains. What do you have here? You come to us at a strange time, I'm afraid. The stock's not what it used to be, but we have fine weapons and armor to offer you yet. All forged right here, the black hammer. What happened? We just don't have the supplies, been expecting the next delivery for near on weeks now, and haven't seen a sign of it. Have to expect uh, they've been hit by bandits, the road uh, out east is crawling with them. Or my workers send off with the wagon themselves, maybe, to make some coin. Tuatanu snorts, as if uh, that lord would dare. He's right about the bandits. The dire situation in villages like this and the exodus of the to the cities has created far too many opportunities for unscrupulous sorts. Tuatanu stretches his jaw, thinking, if you happen to be headed that way, maybe you could uh, keep an eye open, uh, out for a supply wagon. Or my shipment, at least. They'll be cutting through the black meadow, I expect. Only good road for it. Just accuracy bonus. <laughs> As it is, uh, most of our weapons uh, go to his grace, Lord Redrick. Totally cleanse at the nearby guard. And that's... As it should be. <laughs> but it doesn't leave much for outsiders. We just don't have the iron. I'll see them back and safe and sound. I would appreciate your trying anyhow. You bringing back supplies at least, I'll give you... I'll have much more to offer you. A discount to start. And if you do find my workers, you give them good smack upside of the head for me. Well, I still want to buy shit from you. I would like to see your wares, please. Of course, you wouldn't find any finer anywhere else. Except uh, the ones you uh, had in the bush there. Jena's lands. Increased reach of constitution plus one reliable. Hold hold wall. Ooh. Arbalest two handed. Speed reduced crit damage. Very slow. Azurate stiletto. Oh, there's a lot of info on those. Not actually a proper lance, but rather a pike. The weapon uh, was gifted to a Orlan maid along with a goat by her wizard master, Gabrindo, who was forced to show her the door after a number of episodes of remarkable clumsiness and brash carelessness that had left his grimoire waterlogged in his laboratory in ashes. <laughs> Good worker. The gifts were all the soft-hearted wizard could do to staunch his guilt. Wandering from place to place with only her goat, her bike, and reputation for negli negliance, ne negligence that preceded her, her fortunes changed one day when she encountered a pair of soldiers trapped by a group of bandits. 
too short to wield uh, the pike properly, she instead climbed atop of her goat and spurred it into a fray, leveling the pike like a lance and running one of the bandits through. Frightened and no, confused by the display and intimidated by the Jenna's coarse language, the remaining bandits fled and the soldiers' lives were spared. Her actions earned her a commission with the local fort and she served uh, with a distinction in cavalry. The original experience had given her such pleasure that she always found a place at front of any charge. Eventually, this took its toll and she went missing after her unit was commanded to charge a group of trolls. <laughs> uh, what an epic lady. Twenty percent of crazes converted to hits. Hmm. Nice. Hold war. A masterwork of dwarven craftsmanship. The sturdy herbalist earned its name during Battle of Marching Mountains, where a dwarven ranger held off a group of ogres bearing down on him and his few remaining comrades. In the ranger's hands, the herbalist proved uh, more than capable of launching bolts through thick ogres' hide, holding the invading forest bay just uh, long enough to reinforcements for the reinforcements to arrive. While uh, victory against the ogres proved short-lived, the tale of it is still one held with great pride around dwarven campfires. Hey, Ironman. Can inflict prone. Hmm. Meal armor. Uh, that looks very much like a crossbow to me. And not an armor, to be honest. <laughs> I think this shop is bugged. There's a lot of shit here, by the way. Now it's working correctly. For some reason, those were uh, stacked on each other. Azurate Stiletto. The War of Black Trees brought hardship and suffering to many clan fattens, but it bore a special tragedy for its druidic orders, who were uh, forced not only to endure the deaths of many friends and kin, but also destruction of the lands they revered above all else. Among the, these were Azurate, a young await. Deeply troubled by the, the use of elements to turn nature against people of Eir uh, Clan Fatha, and the one, wondering if she, he was uh, seeing the last days of his people, Azure took to walking to the endless stretches of burned down trees in search of something, anything that might signal a reason to hope. He found it in an old uh, ironwood tree, thick and gnarled with roots that run in waves through the ground as though they'd been woven there. It stood as it uh, always had. So cinched uh, well up the side of the trunk now, while everything around it had been incinerated by the soldiers of Derwood, leaving wasteland of thousands acres in every direction. Azuret plucked a single branch from the old tree, making sure the ex to express his profound gratitude. An accomplished organic artifice artificer, Azuret uh, reshaped the branch into a blade that would rival any made in forge. He infused it with the strength of the elements, vowing never again to be at their mercy, and resolved that if the tree could endure, endure so too could he. In his hands, the blade uh, would fit uh, its way into many hearts of uh, hearts of many soldiers who stood at the edge of forests with torches and barrels of pitch, and by the war's end he had saved many forests from the flame. When his years were drawing to a close, Azurite made a, a final pilgrim back to the old ironwood tree which still stood, and he laid uh, the knife at its base, to be taken up by someone else in need of inspiration in dark times. On his way there, he was uh, pleased to see that beneath the ashes was uh, that covered the forest floor, new life had begun to spring. Azuret Stiletto is unusual, as the entire uh, weapon is dark red-brown uh, wood, even uh, the blade. The magic used in this creation hardened and protected the wood, preventing it from chipping or warping. Dark green wines and sprouts, leaves sprout from it and wrap themselves around the hilt to form the grip. That's a pretty epic weapon. Oh, thank you. What? No, this is was the strange tea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Three points of damage reduction, or a, yeah, damage reduction bypass, and a yolting touch. That is pretty epic dagger. 
Outward and Buckler. Plus five defenses. It's a lot of text in this one, honestly. The simple wooden buckler would not uh, be out of place in a pile of surplus training shields. Painted green, it has uh, two black iron straps across its front that form a large X. It looks uh, like uh, it has uh, taken more than its share of blows and may have been in use for far too long. But far from ordinary, the buckler is in fact thousands years old. Thousands of years old. Its preservation uh, a testament to transcendence of its humble creation. The Palkler originally belonged to one of the founding members of Darkosi Paladini when she was just a square uh, thousands of years ago in the glory days of Old Valia. As it's uh, accumulated damage from war and weather, the Palkler became extension of the Paladin's own irrepressibility and protectiveness, as well as a symbol that inspired those in her charge. She wore it in uh, every battle of her long and distinguished career, and thought the paladin's name would uh, eventually succumb to the ravage of time, the shield has yet to do the shame. same. It is said that the shield uh, was partially to its uh, original master, that it will allow none but a paladin of similar conviction to touch it, and in times of need, it has a way of making it into hands of those whose soul mirror the greatest qualities of the Dark Ossie founder. Hmm. Thank you, Miss Pelanar. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, this is several thousand years old. I'll give it to you for a couple of coppers. Plus five defenses. Herald. Nice. Epic shield. What else is in here? Breastplate, scale armor, more of these. Rings. Blunting belt. Ooh, that is actually pretty damn good. Plus five damage reduction for pierce and slash. It's not even that expensive. Cape of withdrawal. Fifteen defense when disengaging. Brands horn figurine. Summon, summon animate. Rope and grappling hook. Yeah, the belt looks uh, really, really nice. Pry bar. Hmm. I almost think we should buy these uh, ropes and grappling hooks and pry bars. They sound like something I might be needing at some point of the game for some of the checks. Those. Ten times the price, so it's now harder to solo do this. Yeah, that is quite expensive. So can we just sell the junk here? Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense to buy the crafting hook. Netquist. I mean, I, I've played my share of games <laughs> to know that is something useful. Money! 600. Mm, I almost have half for that. Belt. I have to remember. That belt is here. Planting belt. I should make a note about that. What was this uh, in the first village? Go by costs around. Yeah. That note system. 
It's so nice. Let's save here. Yeah, he got it. That would be nice. Getting discount on the items if we went find the wagon. Because some of those items are really nice. Mm, there's this uh, temple here. And these uh, houses and windmills. We should probably check those. Let's go to the windmill and the houses first. And then the... Last one. I see alcohol. Five, four finger discount is the best discount. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's a uh, non done. This man and woman appear to have a deep. have been deep in this. Uh, in the, uh, this woman, man and woman appear to have been deep in conversation, working at closing two bulging satchels. They move to embrace, and the woman notices your approach, and pauses, her smile faltering Good day a to you. Well, hello. Can we help you? She looks uh, to her companion, Rose Furving, with confusion. Do you know this man, Nonton? Yes, I think we met in the Wellwood. I warned him about the bear. He inclined his head. Glad to see you've made it. Was there something else you wanted? You two seem to be in a hurry. Yes, I imagine so. Ingrid laughs. We are packing for a trip, actually. I've been mentioning, meaning to visit the Defiance Bay, and she looks at the Nantan. Well, in truth, I think I've had my fill of this town. It's time for some new scenery, he says. Is there anything you can tell me about the Killer Whale? Only that you'll want to be moving on as soon as you can. You'll have seen the treaty, I imagine, but the road goes deeper. If you were looking for work, I would say you have better chances of it elsewhere. We are ready to do for defense pay ourselves. Goodbye. Yoink. Get your book. What else do you have here? Some stuff for me. No, you guys have fun in, in the other place. You can set highlight toggle gee if you don't want to use the tab too much. Hmm. Is there a default one, uh, Endermin? Because uh, that might be a nice thing to have. We know there's some more grain in there, Trumble. We won't settle for scraps while you grow fat on our crops. A muffled shouting emerges from inside the mill. The first of you who drunk hearts comes through that door, gets shot between the eyes. Guards hear me, Svenor. I'll put you down like a dog. Come away now, lads. But we'll be back, Trumble. And we'll have fair prizes. Or by the flame, we'll have a reckoning. Against the crane, investigate the feud. Just hit the tap to toggle instead, it works way better since you can double tap for quick loot. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, toggle, tap, excellent. Yeah, that, that is much better. Thank you. Uh, I did. Uh, I may have missed uh, Hikar. Feel free to uh, tell me what it was. I I may have missed whatever was there. Oh crap, the guy may, might shoot me. An elven man stands before you, his relatively stocky build suggesting a life of labor. His face is pale and drawn. His eyes wide. Behind him, a younger man and woman exchange worried glances. The miller raises club as you enter. It shakes violently in his grip. Get back if uh, you value your life. Hold on, I'm not here to hurt anyone. The miller hesitates, then lowers the club a fraction. Who are you? Is Vayner uh, roping foreigners into his little crusade now? I thought you could use some help. Those people out there seem pretty angry. Can we always scroll up a uh, chat window? Let me see that. Well, too late. Really tremble, uh, says in relief. 
Hello, yes, it's. Could I use a friendly face? I think it you uh, heard some part of what that crowd was asking for. Green, as if the, I've got the, all it tucked away somewhere. Swinner's been egging that a lot. Uh, that lot on day, uh, on four days now. They've been keeping clear so far, but if things keep on like they are, I don't know how much longer we've got before uh, things get messy. Please, if you're not here on his behalf, Maybe you could uh, talk to Swainer. He won't listen to me anymore. Just explain that we are all getting uh, small rations now. We are all making sacrifices. I had some other questions. What was all the truckers outside? You heard the beginning. Swainer's uh, whipped them up into a froth, going on about grain stores. Claims I've hidden away most of it. All I do with the grain is sell it. I can't create it out of thin air, and I can't hand it out for free. I pay farmers for the crops they bring in, and I sell what comes out of the mill. Most of it goes to the Black Hound, on the west side of town, for ale, and Svenor and his lot sure don't mind that part. They take a look at the fields on the way into town. You take a look at the fields on the way into town, crops plighted, and most of uh, what I'm getting from farmers, it's all gone off, rotted through. I can pay top prices for plighted beef, and I barely got enough good grain to go around. Swainer is hauling after things he has no right to. Hunter resolve. Seems like a pretty clean story for a messy situation. It's not. Look, Swainer has always been rotten bastard, <laughs> with stores so limited. Maybe I save the good stuff uh, for people who deserve it. Alfra, for instance. She's expecting a child. Should I let her starve instead? Do the village know about the grain supply? Some, the innkeeper for instance. It's better not to worry anyone. I'll be trading for supplies soon enough. If we can just keep things calm until then, we'll be in the clear. The innkeeper? I wouldn't drink the ale, is all I'm saying. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I bought all the ale. Maybe I ought to talk with the swainer then. I'd be grateful if, grateful if you did. He won't listen to any, me anymore, but maybe you'll have better luck. Tell him we are all having hard time, a hard time of it, and we'll all have to make some sacrifices. We'll be in your debt for it if you can convince him. You can smack him in the head, at least. Could move bell. <laughs> you mean this one? I'm not sure. Oh, who's the rangers? Mm, no. Oh well. Oh, that's all the chat. Like from the start almost. Oh well. What was the implication, Hikar? Feel free to share it. Because, like an idiot, I totally missed it. Let's check the house on this side of town as well. Account. F wrong, wrong building. <laughs> Sorry. Let's 
for some reason we were drawn into the tavern. <laughs> Dwarven guidance system, not not the best. There was a line about them being happy when the guy told you lost. He lost his hunting partner up north.